There have been several instances in the past where firefighting engines have stalled while working near or crossing active fire lines, resulting in the loss of equipment and the loss of life. That low oxygen potential was recorded here, and it was done with a very small fire. Even in the presence of a steady 13 mile an hour wind with low green fuel, the fire effectively snuffed out my torch. This next clip takes place about an hour after we started burning. And I tell you that just so you know that the tip of the torch is hot. But this clip nicely shows the exhaust from the fire consuming enough oxygen to put the torch out. Note that it is not the visible smoke that's actually putting out the fire. The torch often dims or dies before it reaches the visible smoke. You can see right here where the fire dies and reignites as I move the tip of the torch through an oxygen poor zone. It's worth noting that this oxygen poor zone is right next to the flames. Uh, the, f the fire's still going uh, at ground level, right at ground level. There's clearly enough oxygen getting in to sustain that fire, but just above it, it's getting snuffed out. And this is a small fire. It'd be interesting to see how big this oxygen pour zone is on a much larger head fire. Uh, one of the problems, of course, with right, testing that is you've got to be close to it. The rest of these clips are in order with this shot occurring at the start of the burn. At this point, I'm assuming that the reason my torch keeps going out is due to just bad mix. As it turns out, this mix is a 4 to 1 diesel gas mix. That's not very hot, but we really don't need a hot mix to get the grass to go. A little later, you'll actually hear me chuckle as I figure out that it's the low oxygen that's putting out my torch and not bad torch mix. So just up here is where I discover that it's actually the oxygen that's the problem and not the uh, mix. The rest of this video is a series of clips of the fire simply putting out my torch another, every time I bring the, the torch down feet. next to the fire. Gonna go up to where it starts curving. So keep your eye on the and tip the of that torch. I left this next clip in uh, just so you can get an idea of smoke dispersal on this day. You'll hear the burn boss call for me to go up in front of the, the fire and take a look at the smoke dispersal. It's breaking up enough that I can uh, see across the valley, um, but just the head part is really thick. It looks like further back there's no smoke. That's fine, just so it breaks up before it gets too far in the other direction. At several points during the burn this day, I had to go into the you green and light off patches that didn't burn, and I could hold my breath, walk in, burn a couple patches of pretty narrow strip that were burning and then step back out and, and take another breath. So I didn't have to really breathe any smoke, but what's interesting, if you think about this from a, uh, the perspective of a truck, it has to breathe all the time. So as a truck approaches this, if it takes a gulp of low oxygen air, it stalls. And then I'm not sure how long it would take cranking-wise to eventually start sucking in uh, higher oxygen air into that whole chamber. It could take a very long time if the filter box and the intake manifold are both full of low oxygen air. Added to that, the fire which caused the engine to die to start with is now getting closer and reducing oxygen levels even further. At this point, the truck and the crew are both significant danger of being burned over. With that in mind, this fire, it's what, two feet tall, seems clearly passable by a fire truck. If a fire truck had to run through this head fire and get across it into the black, I would bet money that it could make it across that line. 
but all it would need is to take one gulp of that low oxygen air to stall the engine and if there's enough of a gulp inside that um, passageway it could take several minutes of cranking to clear that engine and clear that passageway and start sucking fresh air by that time uh, time is up It's possible that this low oxygen effect that we're seeing here is due to the fact that we're burning during the growing season. We have a lot of green grass and that may be causing it. But I don't know that that's true. If this was brown grass, standing tall brown grass, I wouldn't have to go back in and connect the dots to make a solid black line for us. So there's a really good chance that this is actually occurring all the time. Just no one's standing next to the fire and burning themselves up trying to test it. Um, it'd be interesting to see if that's the case. If it is happening all the time, then maybe we really do have to rethink how we cross or how we approach or work next to uh, active fire lines with our engines. Well, this is a really interesting and dangerous effect. And I hope it has stimulated conversations between you and your crew, and I really hope it stimulated someone to write a grant and actually study this. I think a, a boom arm like on a backhoe uh, could roll right alongside one of these fires with an oxygen sensor hanging off of it and get some really interesting answers for us. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or comments, please post them below. If you like the video, please help promote it by clicking like.